All right, in this video, uh, the topic is going to be uh, gene therapy. And that's one of those, if you look on that outline, they mentioned gene therapy. Uh, so you've got to be familiar with it. So I went and got a research article on it, kind of picked it apart a little bit, and went over some of the, you know, the conditions that are very common, you know, what's the, you know, what's the mechanism behind it, and then what are some of the issues that they have with it. So we try to incorporate that into the, into the questions here. So um, hope you like the video. All right, guys. So it says, uh, which of the following best describes the use of viruses uh, used as vectors in gene therapy? So the whole key with this one is the whole gene therapy thing. It says, a family with newborn baby diagnosed with X-linked severe combined immune deficiency, or SCID, presents to your office with questions in regards to potential treatment modalities for their child. They have read that injecting a virus which carries a therapeutic gene may provide benefit. Which of the following best describes the use of viruses used as vectors in gene therapy? So you, you, you kind of have to understand, like, uh, and this is obviously something that's part, you know, it's, it's part of the, the outline that they have. But you got to understand that a, a gene, uh, that say a gene, I don't know, for lack of a better thing, goes into a cell. Okay, if you just do that basic uh, straight up, it typically uh, does not function. So you need to, to kind of have something take over this gene. And what they use are viruses, okay, a specific type of virus we'll talk about. But they use the, 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 the viruses and then it basically encapsulate it. And then that delivers the, the gene um, and also kind of the genetic material, uh, which is kind of manipulated uh, kind of in the lab and stuff, you know, into the new and, and to the target cell. So that's kind of how the gene therapy in a, in a nutshell works. I mean, that's kind of a simple... Uh, very elementary way of describing it. But anyways, they use a virus to encapsulate it, uh, and they could have modified the virus. And when that introduces that into the target cell, which is either the, you know, that's the cell that needs the work, whether it's a, even potentially a ca cancer cell or, or some type of uh, issue. In this one, it's the X-linked uh, piece of it. So, which of these answer choices kind of uh, best describes how that really works? Is it A, uh, adenoviruses are used to introduce their RNA into the nucleus, uh, though the RNA is not integrated into the chromosome? Is it B, retroviruses create double-stranded DNA copies of their RNA genome, which can be integrated into the host cell? Is it C, injection of therapeutic DNA into the target cells? Or is it D, uh, creation of artificial lipid sphere, uh, a liposome, with an aqueous core transmitting DNA through the target cell membranes? Now, you know, to me, when I look at this, this is just flat out, uh, it's just confusing. But your big takeaway point here is whenever they start talking about gene therapy, um, I want you to think this. I want you to think retrovirus, okay? Because I'll say this. All these three answers, B, C, and D, are all correct. On, on, in, a, in, a, in a manner, but the difference between B, C, and D is C and D are non-virus mediated. And so your big take-home point, when you say gene therapy, one of the most common ways, uh, which is kind of the lead way for right now, is that they use retroviruses. And the retroviruses uh, essentially do that. They, they encapsulate it. They could be a modified ahead of time, obviously. And then they are put into the uh, to the target site. Now they could be either uh, could be done through IV or uh, injection, you know, into uh, the site where it needs to go, and then it is taken up by the target cells. Okay. Um, now another way they can do it is they can take the the the, the the cells out of the patient, you know, and then kind of expose them in the lab and then reintroduce them uh, to, to the patient. But the key is, without getting too deep into the woods, is you need to be thinking that they use retroviruses, uh, okay? Retroviruses. Now, why is A not correct? Because they do use adenoviruses. You know, again, number one, you're always going to look for the retrovirus, period, okay? And then you're going to know it, it it creates double-stranded DNA copies from the RNA genome. You know, make sure they don't mess this up with you, that they don't put DNA, DNA, or RNA. It's, they make 
double-stranded uh, DNA copies of their RNA genome, okay? But why is A not correct? Well, because adenoviruses, I mean, they do introduce stuff into the nucleus, but it's not RNA, right? What is it? It's DNA. Now, if they would have said DNA, then you could have put that, those kind of equal, equal answers. Even though this is the most common, this would have been correct. But adenoviruses are used to introduce their DNA into the nucleus, through the, though the DNA is not integrated into the chromosome. That would have been a true statement if it would have said DNA and uh, DNA. Now, just for quick, you know, just kind of a side note, with the adenoviruses, if you don't re recall, um, remember the boy in the hat? I want you to look up that video with uh, uh, the adenovirus, you know, all the different viruses that were DNA, okay? It's a good little review there. But if you see any question on the STEP exam that talks about gene therapy, I want you to be thinking retrovirus, okay? And encapsulation, it was modified, gets put into the target cell, and that could either be IV injected, or the, and they could have removed the patient's cells uh, out in the lab and then reintroduced them back into the uh, patient. So take on point, retroviruses. Now this one. It's the same uh, question up here because it's the family of the newborn baby with X-linked skid. Now the reason I, I, I'm using this is because that's the one that's the easiest and when I, when I researched this question through the articles, um, they, they, they tended to use this one and for a reason. Presents to your office with questions in regards to potential treatment of dialysis for their child. They have read that injecting a virus which carries a therapeutic gene may provide benefit. Here's the question. The research the family has read reveals that gene therapy trials for X-SCID um, have been more successful than trials of cystic for cystic fibrosis. Which of the following supports the data that X-SCID responds better to gene therapy than cystic fibrosis? Because you're thinking, well, they can do that for cystic fibrosis as well, but for some reason, they're saying when you compare the two that there's, there was a better response to the x linked SCID. Why? Now, is it A, the presence of mucus in the lungs makes it phys physically difficult to deliver genes to the target, target lung cells? Is it B, the use of non-integrating vectors? Is it C, the body recognized the viral vector as, for, as a foreign body and mobilized the immune system to attack it? Is it D, the higher incidence that the viral vector causes the disease process? Or is it E, dis, uh, disorders that arise from mutations in multi-gene locations are, best, are the best candidate for gene therapy? Well, you know, again, they both can use the whole gene therapy, but I think the take-home point, especially um, on the research, would say that, you know, a lot of, a lot of these are going to be true. But what's most specific as comparing skid to cystic fibrosis, in this situation, you got to know it's the delivery of it. And the answer choice is going to be A. The presence of the mucus makes it physically difficult, you know, to deliver, you know, and they say that you're trying to introduce this to the target cell. Well, it's in the lungs. That's very hard to do. And X-linked is, well, it's kind of on that X chromosome, so it's very, it's, it's much easier to, to target, per se. So that's why there's been a better response, or one of the reasons that it's a better response to X-skid versus cystic uh, fibrosis. Now, these other answer choices, the use of non-integrating vectors. Okay, I mean, I, I kind of like that because, you know, if it was, uh, you know, it's very, very specific. Now, if, there, if the question got more into uh, side effects, like, well, why, you know, when we're comparing two things and, uh, and if the reason that it works better in one versus the other is side effects, then I want you to start looking at the possible use of non-integrating uh, vectors may have been a choice, meaning, you know, like it's going to different uh, greater locations per se. Uh, so this one you could say, well, it's non-integrating, so it's very specific. Yes, could be true. But the, really the difference between these two is the fact that cystic fibrosis, it was, it's more difficult to deliver to the target cells. And that was actually in, the, uh, in, in that article as well. So if you, but if you see a question on side effects, start thinking that the vectors integrating versus non-integrating Meaning, are they really, you know, laser focused, going to one site, or you know, could they be potentially going to uh, multiple sites? Okay. Is it C? Uh, the answer choice with the body recognized the viral vector as a foreign body and mobilized the immune system to attack it. 
Uh, this could be true in, in different situations. It goes back to the side effect uh, issue, and that's one of the reasons. And this is part of the reason why some of the gene therapy is, is, is that it's difficult is because this does happen, that when they introduce the, vi the viral vector, you know, the immune system kind of goes full tilt. And that, um, you know, and, and that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, cancer... Uh, it's hard, very, very hard, very hard to to, to kind of treat. I say hard to treat cancer. I mean, this isn't my isn't my specialty by no means. Um, but anyways, it's got to be really laser focused, and sometimes cancer has multiple sites. Uh, is it D the higher incidence that the viral vector causes the disease process? Um, this can be true uh, in certain situations, but in again comparing these two, it's not the right answer. Uh, is it E, disorders that arise from mutations in multi-gene locations are the best candidate for gene therapy? Now think about what we said up here. What would, what would be the best? Uh, that if this thing's more, you know, pinpoint or it, whether it hit multiple locations. You know, in gene therapy, we're hoping that if we can get something that's very uh, one gene, it's going to work better than something that has multiple sites such as cancer and stuff like that or, you know, heart disease. Sometimes there's mul multiple genes involved, not just one particular one. So disorders that arise from mutations in, um, if this thing said like single gene locations are best for gene therapy, then I would say, yeah, that makes sense. That could, that could possibly go with that. But since it says multi-genes, they're not the best. Um, the the, the, the uh, single site uh, would, would prob probably uh, be the best. Now, when it comes back to this uh, XGID, you know what they? I think what from what I read, they you know they it's like a bone marrow. Uh, they use the, um, the like a bone marrow procedure that they take it out. They the viral vector. Um, they put a functional copy of that gene in there, and then it goes into the blood, producing this from the stem cell, and then they put a, uh, the patient's bone marrow, and then it's kind of transplanted back into the patient, and that's kind of kind of how it works with skid, but. You know, really, the the, the take-home point, guys, the, the take-home point for this is if they ask you anything on gene therapy, know that the most common uh, way they do it is through the retrovirus, okay? Encapsulated, goes into the into the target cell, double-stranded DNA copies of their RNA genome, know that. And then a, a lot of the difference of it, what would work better in gene therapy is if it was a, a single site would work better. Side effects are always an issue. And then, again, they like SCID as an example, so I, I would just kind of be aware, aware of that one. But in this situation, why it worked better than cystic fibrosis goes back to the delivery of it. And it can be very pinpoint with this one, but you had to hit multiple sites for it to work with the cystic fibrosis, which makes it difficult. So anyways, guys, hope this was helpful.